Hi, this is Christian Cantrell. I'm on the Adobe Air team, and today I want to show you a project I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, which I think is probably the coolest thing I've worked on since I've been at Adobe. It's um, the first um, truly multi-screen application that I've written that runs uh, everywhere that the Flash platform runs. Um, so uh, I'll show you an example. This is um, iReverse. It's a reverse the application, and we see the Air version here, which is running on the desktop on Mac, and we see it's just a you know, simple reverse game with, uh, with an AI. I'll go ahead and start a new version here. Start a new game and play through. So sort of what you'd expect um, on air. Um, we have also the Windows version. I'm switching over to a Windows 7 virtual machine. And uh, we see uh, the game loads here. The um, state of the game was saved. So um, we're starting from, uh, from the last game. Um, we'll show the Ubuntu version, the Linux version. So uh, let's see, where's a good move? Here we go. Um, go ahead and start a new game. So you can see it plays identically across uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is what we expect from Air. Now what's cool is that we also have a uh, version that runs in the browser. Here we go. And you can see that uh, the application has scaled up because the screen's larger. Um, what's nice about this application, here's the desktop version, is that it relays itself out uh, as the window changes dimensions. So this is going to allow it to run on all these different screens, all these different aspect ratios, um, different pixel densities, um, including you know, devices and, uh, and desktop uh, as well. So here we have a Mac, Windows, Linux, and we have the browser. So cool stuff. But what's really cool is that we have multiple, uh, multiple devices here as well where the application will run. Um, the first application, uh, or the first uh, device I want to show you is the um, iPod Touch. And we'll go ahead and run it. And here we go, we have the exact same experience. I can rotate the, uh, the device and you can see that it's laying itself out as the aspect ratio changes as we go from landscape to portrait. Um, you can see that the scores are up here when we're in portrait and the buttons are down here when I rotate it. The scores go here and the buttons arrange themselves so that it works nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and play the game. You can see it's very snappy. The AI works very, very quickly. So that's the iPod version. Uh, here I have a Droid, a Motorola Droid, running the Android operating system. And I have the application here as well. And you can see that it works identically. Um, works very, very quickly. And we can change the aspect ratio and works exactly as you'd expect. And last but most certainly not least, we have the iPad version. This is very exciting, just picked this up this morning and we, uh, we're already supporting the iPad. And here we go, go ahead and start a new game. And here we go, the iPad version. You can see it's very, very snappy. The game is uh, laying itself out again. So let's see, where's a good move? Here we go. So very fun game, works perfectly across all these devices, all these operating systems. Now what's amazing about this, and what I really wanna emphasize, is that this isn't just the same app, this is actually the exact same code base. There isn't a single line of code that I had to change to get this application to run on all these different operating systems and all these different devices. The exact same code, uh, it's working on these uh, this is a good shot right here because it is showing two drastically different um, you know, aspect ratios and screen sizes um, and the game is working perfectly, laying itself out dynamically um, on all these different devices. Um, I'll show you how I do this. I'm going to Flash Builder here. And uh, the way this works is I have a reverse project right here, which is an action script project. And then I have several different um, projects for different platforms, reverse Android, reverse browser, reverse desktop, um, iPad, and iPhone. Now, the reverse action script application is what contains, you know, the uh, sort of the core of the game. So here's the code here for the reverse game. Now, if you look at the code for something like um, reverse, uh, I'll show the interesting one, reverse iPad, you can see that um, all it does is basically it's 20 lines of code. All it does is instantiate a new reverse and adds it to the uh, to the display list. And that's it. So this enables me to have sort of a different, a platform-specific wrapper 
a platform specific um, configuration in my app descriptor, but that's it. It's 20 lines of code and a different, as uh, different application descriptor. Um, all I do is include the, the game, which is essentially a, sort of a component, and the application automatically runs on that screen, lays itself out, um, and works perfectly across all these devices and all these operating systems. Um, this is really, really exciting. There's no other technology in the world that lets you do this. Um, works great, works perfectly. Uh, got it working on the iPad instantly as soon as I got home. I installed it and it worked. Um, I'm going to be writing a, uh, an article to show how to do all this. Um, it's a little bit tricky. It's something that I had to, uh, to learn how to do, but I'm going to share all that information. Uh, I'm going to open source uh, the iReverse application and uh, so everyone can see the code and see how it works. And so you guys can start writing your multi-screen uh, applications as well. Thanks for watching.